I was working in a reservoir high in the mountains of South America. Not too tough a job, but an important one. The feed pipe we were installing supplied drinking, cooking, and washing water to thousands of people. My name's Mike Nelson. I had a good assistant, Durango Lima, a local diver. He was experienced and careful. That was why he was good. It doesn't matter what the job is, in what body of water, or how careful you are. Down below, you can be hit by any kind of an accident. It was raining barrels and crates. Careful sometimes means lucky. It sure didn't in this case. Durango's caution and know-how weren't any help to him now. Mine either. I'd have to go topside to save him. My diver assistant, Durango Lima, had been hit and trapped by debris on the floor of a reservoir. Now that's where the trouble had come from. Senor Nelson! What happened? It belongs to the Diego Ranch. He lost a tire. The cargo tore loose and dropped in the water. You're telling me? One of those crates fell in Durango. I'll need help. There's only Pete Butler. Oh, no, not him. I wouldn't take him as a gift. Now get me somebody here, fast! But, Senor Nelson, there's not... Hi, Maria. Yeah, I gotta get this crummy chair fixed. How can you live like this? Like what? Not too bad, anyhow. It'll do for now. Oh, you've been saying that for four years. You expect me to marry you and come live in a place like this? You did not go see Senor Ramirez today. Oh, heck, honey. What do I need with a job like that? Huh? Look, baby, I'm no truck driver. Are you? I'm a salvage diver, one of the best. What do I want with driving a truck, huh? It's work, and it pays money. Oh, Pete, I'm tired of waiting. Pete, you got your diving gear ready? Well, sure, why? Oh, I'm sorry, Maria, when I started this. There's been an accident at the lake. Durango's been trapped, and Mike Nelson needs help. Oh? <laughs> Mike Nelson needs help, huh? I told you he couldn't handle it. You guys should have given me the contract. Pete, what are you going to do? Well, that's City Hall for you. With me around, they sent all the way to the States for Nelson. Are you coming or aren't you? Take it easy, take it easy. Uh, you bring my car, I'll go with Carlos. <laughs> Concussion, a few bruises. He'll be okay, senor. Now, don't go away. I got another patient. 
Muy bien, señor. Durango's own efforts to get loose had used up his air. The spare tank I brought down would be really a lifesaver. Bottom, about 50 feet. There should be nothing to it. crowbar and any kind of a break, I'd have Durango free in another few minutes. Or so I thought. Seems I needed to bring just a little more pressure to bear on the bar. Here was extra help. Uh, this character was just making things worse. Oh, no, not Pete Butler. I'd met him before in the States. His high opinion of his skill wasn't shared by anyone he'd worked with. And you can see why. I finally managed to explain what was needed. His strength, plus my own, gave us the right leverage and a chance to pull Durango out. He was free. There was a real pro. Instead of panicking, he'd kept his head the whole time and helped save his life. Sorry, amigo, but Pete Butler was all I could get. Uh, better than nothing, I guess. Is he all right? <laughs> It'd take more than that to kill this boy. A couple of days, he'll be working again. We'll get him to the hospital. Get started. I'll clear the road ahead. See, si. vamonos. Why is Pete still down there? Well, I thought he was right behind me. I mean, he didn't come up. Something had bothered me when I'd first seen Butler down there. What? Now I remembered. His diving gear. At this depth, he was toting a one-way ticket to the hospital on his back. He was cashing it in now. Convulsions from oxygen poisoning. His one chance was fresh air, topside. You got oxygen poisoning. This is a rebreather. You know you're not supposed to use this below 30 feet, don't you? We were working at 50. 
Pete, you could have killed yourself. Uh, if you'd have let me do it the way I started, it'd have been all right. I'm sorry you got into trouble. Use your tank, huh? It's a lot safer. Now look, big shot. <coughs> I don't need you to tell me what kind of equipment to buy, see? I had this rebreather made special. I've been diving, diving with it for years. You get it? Come on, honey, let's go. Just past the big man. He <coughs> seems to be all right. Hey, he'll dry out, I guess. So this finishes you here, huh? Mm-hmm. You won't need me to help pull out that junk. Guess you get a crane. I'll do the job. Yes. As soon as I can get some men together. Well, there's no rush. It'll be at least a couple of days before Durango's able to do any more underwater work for you. He's a good boy, that one. Yes, he is. Say, you'll be coming back again someday, eh, amigo? Bet I will. Oh, say, I'm not flying out until tomorrow morning. Why don't you drop by the hotel when you get through here, huh? I will. driver of the ranch truck. Is he worse? No. He became conscious. He told me he was carrying a drum of cattle dip. And it's in there? See, si, in the city's water supply. It's called Daitico. It's a deadly poison. I was all set to leave South America. My work in the city reservoir was wrapped up early despite the accident that injured my assistant. Hey, Carlos. I'm sorry, Senor Nelson, but we need your help. The truck that overturned this morning. Yeah? One of the drums that fell in the reservoir contains cattle dip, Daitico. It's a deadly poison. How deadly? Enough to contaminate the whole reservoir and poison the entire population. We could shut off the pumps, but what's going to happen to the people without water? Yeah, we got to get it up. Fast, before it starts leaking. Here, I'll take that. Thanks. Durango, he won't be able to help. I'll have to get Pete Butler. Yeah, but that gear of his, it's not safe. I'll pick up Durango's tanks. Okay, good. I'll meet you at the reservoir, huh? On. No. Now, I'm going to tell you once more, Nelson. I'm going to make it plain. I'm not going to help you. Now, will you get out? I'm sorry, Mr. Nelson. Not your fault. You are not a man. I've wasted all these years thinking you would be someone. I hated just now you kill him, you. Why can't they just tell the people not to use the water? And how do they do that? Do you think you're in America where people have telephones and radios? How about the poor people? They only have one tap at the end of the street. Are you going to tell each one? Well, they're just going to have to turn it off at the main valve, then. And then what? The water up there, that's all they've got. Pete, do you understand? That's all they've got.
Maria, I, I can't even use my own equipment. It's too deep. You heard what they said. They're bringing Durando's equipment for you to use. Pete, you must help them. Please. Mm. You're right. As usual. Uh, you'd better go on home and see you later. getting somewhere. At least I'd located the barrel of deadly powder. Under all that debris, it was wedged in tight. It had to be gotten out of there and out of the reservoir. And now wouldn't be a minute too soon. If any sizable amount of water leaked in, the powder inside would expand and burst the barrel like a homemade bomb. Once that happened, the reservoir would be useless for months. Diving gear. Durango's tanks are empty. Empty? Nelson down there? Yes. Wait a minute. Mike sure those things are insane. Yeah, he does, huh? this for the drum. I never thought I'd be glad to see Pete Butler. Clumsy or not, he still represented manpower. I couldn't understand his wearing that deadly rebreather again. But there was nothing I could do about it now. Getting that barrel out from under was my number one problem. This time, Pete behaved like a working diver, an active member of a team. The postman rang twice for Pete Butler. Oxygen poisoning, again. You want to get oxygen poisoning again? Where's Durango's tank? His tanks are empty. I can bring it. Come on, no, Pete. No! Never judge a book by its cover or a man by his mouth. One thing Pete Butler wasn't was a coward. Going down again to 50 feet in view of this demonstrated susceptibility to oxygen poisoning meant serious danger for him, death maybe. If he hadn't known that before, he knew it now. We made good headway. We might get the job done in time after all. 
While Pete worked the lever, I tried to pull the barrel clear. It didn't work. Just the opposite. Now we were in real trouble. The whole district was. Water was getting into the barrel. At any moment, the expanding powder might push off the lid. Then poisoned water would be on its way, irretrievably, to every tap in the city. It had to happen sooner or later. We had both known it. But this time, I couldn't take Pete topside. Not till the job was done. Instead, I gave him some of my air and prayed that it would stall off the effects of oxygen poisoning for a few minutes at least. I don't know how Pete managed to keep going, but he did. He had every excuse in the world to quit and save his life, and he stayed on the job. Muy hombre, a lot of men. <laughs> 